If you're looking for a great tactical experience, here goes the Tyrant's Blessing, a turn-based game with Into the Bridge style gameplay and a really good focus on strategy. The main feature of the game is a solid number of heroes with unique abilities that need to fight through many battles on a chess field containing 64 cells. And taking into account roguelike mechanics in this game, there is potentially a few dozens of hours of gameplay. But is it fun? Let's check in this video. The story plays in the game pretty mediocre role, you will see only small pieces of dialogue through the game, so just for the context. Actions are taking place on the shores of Tiberia that were in the war. The king with queen died, and tyrant Ingeminel has conquered the throne. His goal was to create an army of immortal warriors, for the eternal ruling of those lands. Hopefully, Princess Lindel, who is the heir to the throne of Tiberia, is still alive, and with a small group of allies trying to protect her lands and people. And in that journey, we're gonna help her, so let's deep dive into the gameplay. Each roguelike run is starting near the campfire, where we at the beginning of the game have only 4 heroes and 2 pets. For every game we have to pick 3 heroes and 1 pet, that will be our main party for the full run. And one of the heroes will be a leader, who will give exclusive bonuses to the party for each fight. Actually, there will be a few moments through each run, where you will be offered a random hero to replace any other from your team. But that in fact doesn't provide solid bonuses, so it is better to plan at the start of your game your team for the best synergies. Let's start from the main part – battles. Upon picking difficulty and team, we are getting to the map. On the map we will proceed through many missions to get to the main objective, the final mission where we have to beat the main boss. Each mission includes a basic objective to kill all enemies and also some bonus objectives to get additional bonuses upon completion. Sometimes we also have to protect or maybe gather some stuff for completion. There are not so many types of missions, so you have to be ready that the main entertainment here is planning through the fights. And I have to say that this part of gameplay is performed pretty well. While each hero has only two skills, we also have the ability to buy items that allow to give us additional abilities with a limited number of uses per battle. Pets have only one skill that is used mostly for some control and moving of enemies. To make the process engaging, we have to worry not only about the position of our heroes and pets by the end of our turn, but also about their shades. How it works? If the hero, upon the beginning of his turn, was at the risk to get damage, it is not enough to move him from this cell. You have also to deal with that threat to your shade. And that mechanic actually blew the mind within the first hours of gameplay, because you may perform an excellent move from your perception, but BOOM! and you lost health because you forgot about the shade. To remove the threat to your shade, there are several options. You may either kill an enemy, or move him to another cell to redirect the attack, or use special ability that removes shade or makes the enemy peaceful. Such abilities are rare and have limited uses and also you have to understand that each hero may only move and use one ability each turn. So if you don't kill an enemy and use some defensive skill, the number of your enemies stays the same. Thus, management of damage and efficient killing of enemies is the thing with which you will deal all the time. Considering we are fighting an undead army, enemies will have some amount of additional lives, so upon death they will revive and perform their next turn till they use all their revives. Within runs, especially on easy difficulty, party will gather the Barian's blessing, which will revive the dead hero upon its death in fight. But you shouldn't think that it makes the game easy. Firstly, you have really limited blessings through the runs, especially on higher difficulties. Also, upon reviving, your hero will have only one health point, and if he was under two or three attacks, he will need to deal with each of such attacks, so you can imagine the price of a mistake in this game. And you have to understand, if you have no blessings and any of your hero dies, you lost the whole adventure and have to start over. Now I want to proceed to another important moment – difficulty. While usually this feature represents mostly the level of threats that we're gonna find on our way, here difficulty also affects the ability to replay your turn within each battle. On easy difficulty it is unlimited and it is just an amazing way to try out different ideas through each turn. On normal you will have only two replays of your turn for each battle. On hard and nightmare you will not have such ability at all and that is insane. Taking into account that the game is pretty hard itself, and the fact that basic heroes are not that good, I highly recommend to anyone to spend the first 5 hours or even more on the easy difficulty. 
easy is still quite challenging and also you'll have a great opportunity to train your skills in different situations. The next important moment is progression. The game is roguelike itself and with different achievements you will get the ability to randomly unlock heroes. While that sounds great, be ready that it is not that easy process. And taking into account solid difficulty level, it will take some time to get solid variability of heroes to play with. The next part of progression is progress within a run. We will get to different areas with slightly different enemies and the game will become harder. Pretty interesting part is that we are not obliged to go for all missions. We may just move the main road to get to the main boss, but additional ways will give us the ability to unlock achievements and also gather money, reputation and Tiberium ore to make our life easier. To make it clear, money is used for items that may be used in fights. We get reputation from the completed missions and bonus missions and Tiberium ore is a material that we may buy for reputation or find in missions in the late stages of the game and further used for increasing stats of our heroes and increase the effectiveness of their skills. We will not get too many of those points, so be ready that most part of points will go into health points of heroes, and others will be used only to increase damage or the number of uses of the most core skills for the party. Phew, I think I covered all important gameplay mechanics, now let's stop on the main advantages and weak parts of the game. Fights in the game feels really great. By replaying each turn for 3, 5 or even 10 times, you can understand that almost any situation is winnable, and that is only a question of your strategy if you can deal with enemies or not. There are different traps, obstacles, cannons and bushes on the map that may be used to increase your chances. In general, I feel that fights themselves are performed decently. The only part that I don't like here is the difficulty. I feel that they have to add an option to allow people to replay turn for unlimited number of times on any difficulty. Because currently it is just so less stressful experience to play on easy difficulty to try different things. And on hard, for example, you will sit and sweat each turn because you may easily lose in case of one mistake. And average run takes something close to 2 hours, so you can imagine the level of intense here. All gameplay outside of fights, including the storyline, is just a filler here. So if you are not focused on intense fights and want some game just to chill, I don't think the game will give you such an opportunity. Apart from the fights, I like the number of options for heroes and pets. They just give a great replayability, which is probably the most important for a roguelike. While I enjoyed the game itself, there are several things that are performed not that good. Firstly, the game has a really slow start. And if you begin with high difficulty, it may take solid time till you get enough achievements for good variability in the game. Also, you cannot access achievements list in the fights, so in fact, you have to write them down or memorize them to efficiently unlock game content. Apart from that, I would say that the game has only a few similar bosses and not so many types of enemies. I feel that with such variability with heroes, they definitely need to work on bestiary because, even with different skills, many similar enemies are not a great thing for a roguelike. And also it made me crazy many times that each time when I haven't finished turn with each hero, it doesn't give me the ability to end turn without additional confirmation. That's just completely not comfortable. Summarizing everything, the game feels pretty cool as a tactical game. The people who are into this genre, you will definitely have a good time at Tyrant's Blessing. And if you prefer more fast-paced games or games with a cool story, I cannot recommend this game to you. That game just won't fit your interests. I want to really thank everyone who supported my previous review. And we are now almost on 10 subs, which is insane. If you enjoyed the video, I will highly appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and put a like below. I hope you had a great time. The next review is planned for Hard West 2. And if you are interested in some other titles, Feel free to mention them in the comments. I will try to cover those games that are worth your attention. That's all for today, thank you for your time, and see you soon on next reviews on Phoenix Game Reviews.